If you watch bus videos, there's a good chance you've seen this story in the news. I want to give my condolences to the family who have suffered through this very tragic incident. I got a child myself and I'd be distraught if anything like this ever happened through something so neglectful and it's something that anyone on the bus themselves couldn't have avoided so but I don't want to get into the side of that I want to talk about the driver's hours as a bus driver you can drive seven days a week for ten hours and you can do that two weeks on the trot and then your last day on your two on your second week you must have a rest of 24 hours but that's not necessarily in the form of a rest day which people might be thinking oh, wait, how do you have 24 hours off work legally and not have day off well what you do is you'll work an early on sat on you'll work an early on sunday should we say so you finish work 2 p.m on sunday you can then start work from one minute past two on Monday. So you've had a full 24 hours off work, but you haven't had a day off. Is that wrong? Swindling the rules, I suppose, but it's all legal. Driver's hours are very different between lorry drivers who run to the EU law and us bus drivers who work to the domestic rules. There's a lot of the fancier rulings I can go into however and the laws and the requirements to it but as a video watcher you may not want to, me to bore you with it uh, I do believe that a lot of accidents are caused by drivers not having enough rest and it, all it takes is a split second to lose your concentration bang accident you've run into a car you've run into an house you've backed into a bus in bus station because you've just split second lost your concentration Am I being far-fetched? No, I'm, I don't think I am. The number one problem, health-wise, driving a bus, is driver fatigue. If you don't know what that is, look at the description now. So that is from being overworked, not having enough rest. Uh, this can really be brought on by yourself because if you are in the bus industry, you will know you are constantly harassed to work overtime. <laughs> It's one of them things, it's just, it's just a job. There is not enough bus drivers out here to serve the routes and serve the, serve the community. So it relies on people like me and other drivers who work seven days a week. Fair play, it's good because you earn a lot of money. But then again, you can't spend it because you're always at work. So you just save it. Good and the bad, everyone likes a day off. And I struggled quite a lot when I first started bus driving. Because... I was like, wow, seven days pay, wow, that's great. I can do all these things and then I never got a chance to do anything because I was always at work. Uh, back on to the fatigue side and how to avoid it and things like that. Uh, I've suffered in the past with driver, dri driver fatigue. Uh, every bus driver will say to you they have, it's just one of the parts of the job. Drivers I will sometimes do will go against the driver and they do bring on driver, driver fatigue. Is what uh, the ruling is, um, a driver must have a rest period with, from start of shift to end shift of 10 hours, but that may be reduced to 8.5 twice a week. I do believe driver's hours are a big contributing factor to driver fatigue because they don't really seem to back up the driver uh, and I know people say well if you're tired just don't go to work because, but, but you can't just not go to work because if you ring up and go I'm tired they'll just say well you should have slept more I'll see you in half an hour and that is what happens within the industry um, you, you are required to get your own rest and I don't think it's suitable to work to live far from work so work it this way yeah 8.5 hours rest so that is from clocking off to clocking on eight and a half hours if i finish work at midnight i'll be home for one o'clock have a bath have something to eat and wind down right 
that could be then two o'clock half past two so we'll, we will call it half past two and I'm meant to start work at half past eight so I need to be setting off at half past seven so that's two to three to four to five to six to seven I've got five hours sleep and then I've got to go and do another 10 hour shift how is that fair on any bus driver uh, fair play I can understand people say oh it's not a hard job you just sit on your ass all day and we do it's not a physically exhausting job but it's mentally exhausting you have to think for other people you have to understand what other people are going to do on road nine times out of ten people just run in front of a bus thinking you'll just stop because that's what bus drivers do they just stop cars pull out in front of you and when you've spent ten hours behind the wheel of a bus you are knackered it's like me saying to yourself if you drive uh, after having five hours sleep do you want to drive down to Land's End and back no I, I know, no, I'm tired why would I do that well why would I drive a bus all day with people on bus if I'm shattered the driver can speak to the employer to try and find a solution but nine times out of ten the solution is the driver needs to take his rest days and then they need to take into consideration people's personal life the incident that has happened a lot of people say well the driver should know when he's fatigued and know when he can't drive and nine times out of ten the drivers do know when they shouldn't be driving but they can't just ring up and say I can't come in I'm tired because it's not an excuse in the bus industry's eyes that's that's a poor excuse to not come into work and you'll be looking at the lines of going down the disciplinary procedure and losing your job so you'll be losing your job for doing something that's safe so if you are knackered instead of ringing up and going I'm too tired I can't come in I'm unfit to drive people will just come in and drive and just hope the perk up some people say it should be the employers responsibility to know when a driver shouldn't be on the road right what my opinion is on that is yes an employer should have the last say whether they believe someone's fit to drive a bus however when I go in in the morning show them my DQC card thank you very much I'll have my duty for the day how do they know I'm, I'm alright there could be 70 other drivers queuing behind me it's just yeah there, there's your DQC there, there could just be there's your running board off you go I wouldn't say it all falls on the employer if there's some things which crop up in my employment where I've had a bump here a bump there I've been too fast here I've been speeding here then it just kind of draw a picture of what I'm, I'm, am I an unsafe driver am I not fit to drive oh here we go oh, god above this tripod's not very comfortable it leaves rings in your it leaves rings in your hands look at that but the job itself is a very very stressful job and I, I can't stress that to you enough <laughs> no it's a stressful job it really is dealing with any job in customer service is stressful but this is like a customer service with 70 people on your bus and you're driving and stopping and picking them up and so you've just got to get into that mind frame literally when you clock off turn off when you clock off on a night time don't think about buses just go home and enjoy yourself put xbox on put telly on have something to eat and you'll feel a damn sight a lot better if you agree with me or disagree pop in comments i'll reply to them um, just what do you think on the driver's hours and fatigue what do you think we could do to reduce it as an as, as a whole industry so the flat cat bus driver on fatigue i'll see you later thank you